and the links that they can actually uh, reach us and the ways that they can be listened to and heard and how it can affect us as people as a science and basically how to apply those things and ways to listen to music and things to look for you know to figure out certain things and basically how to create better music by listening for certain things and I gotta do brainstorming because it's just the way that I like to teach but anyway I'll come over here and I will definitely find something over here to write with I don't know if this thing's gonna last nope Let's see if we have anything else to write this pen will last either but we'll try it anyway so you have your you know regular music one song music song um, basically this brainstorm is going to include um, kind of like you know, looking at music, you know, it's almost like an eyeball, but really, it's like the more you listen to music, it's not just sound, you know, and it, it has to be kind of, I mean, when you first hear music, a song, it just sounds like volume, but the more you listen to it, you could actually look at your entire environment and slowly, you know, it's almost as if the music was like right here in the middle of the room. And it was like empty, and it was just this pen that was the song. And I can just survey it all the way around it, you know, from like 72 feet back, go all the way around in like a spiral motion up towards the music, you know, and then I could encompass it. And then I could, I could even, you know, somehow using a mental uh, fabric, you know, of events around me, you know, I could look at, um, you know, the phys physics of grabbing, you know, like Saran or some form of film or something that could coat the music as I survey around it in this circle that I'm envisioning. And then as I envision it in this circle and go around it, um, I am, it's almost like looking at my head and going around me and then surveying every, you know, detail of my head, you know, forwards and back. You know, so I can see the whole 3D view of what, you know, my head looks like. And it's got to be done with music. Um, and it needs to be a circle, you know. And it needs to become something else, you know, when you create the song. And it's almost like, you know, I mean, this is, you know, more errata. But, um... It's like with your breath control when you when you sing and when you choose your words. Um, you know, it'll all end up being, it'll all end up one song will, you know, out of all the other songs will be able, you know, to um, basically come out as an unconscious spasm or burst, you know, in your body. And it's going to come out in some form of way and it always has. You know, when you were in high school and you had acne and you'd have a pimple right here because Chris Brown was playing, you know, um, Kiss Kiss, you know, was a song that I had a pimple on my head for. And I know it was there and I know that was why, you know, because I know I had a huge, large pimple right here. And it was because that song was being played and I looked cute in it, you know, and, you know, I think that the subconscious, you know, it should have been kind of singled out, but I could tell, you know, and it could be a fart, hiccup, laugh, but when you survey a song all the way around and you get it so good that your body has other ways to burst and explode and, you know, twitch or, you know, say something about it, you know, or it could be a taste or a form or a shape, you know, that is basically once the song is a song, once it is, you know, spiraled in, you know, and then we find our area where it goes out to a straight point here. You know, would be like our X and Y. And in this spiral, 
you know, which is the golden rule. You know, if you look at the Greek, uh, I think it's like 3.92 something, you know, it's like degrees and it goes in a spiral, a, a perfect spiral, but a perfect spiral is kind of oblong, you know, in math. And then it makes a circle here you have to define, you know, in order for it to stay in that circle area, kind of like a tornado. And then you realize this is a ball and now it is moving, you know, but it is the, then all of the material floods into that circle is what you have to envision with your mind powers. So once this happens, you will be going in a straight line. You'll be walking forwards and this you walking forwards, you know, from a point, you know, should be what would have curved this and made it a circle. Since it wouldn't be a circle, it would be a continual spiral with no direction and it wouldn't have a point to where this circle has a dot in the middle where it stops. You know, and you can say, I stopped that circle in the song. And that's just looking at it like if the volume is going this way and the song's playing, this is a start and this is the finish then there has to be, you know, a beginning period and an end, but there has to be somewhere for the song to go, you know. So you you have to make sure that, um, you know, that you get to define when it stops, and then it kind of, you know how songs kind of roll out on the end, they fade? When they start to fade is when this line here is drawn for you and this fade is that spiral so when a song is fading out you know and it starts getting quiet it is going back into the conscious you know and it is feeding back into your body and your you got to pay attention to that you know but if you don't then you won't be able to use it you know and if 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 you keep if you keep thinking this way then eventually people will catch on to it you know and it's very very useful because you have to put intent in the beginning and in the end, you know, and you have to be able to fuel, this is point A, where I didn't want to be suffering, and this is the release. And it's like all of it gets funneled into this area right here, you know, just like, you know, like a whirlpool, you know, in a uh, washer. And, um... You know, like a washing machine, you know, it goes down. Or just a whirlpool in a tub, you know. Because, I mean, the tub, you know, does empty out and it goes in, you know. But eventually, it can't just go down and then you don't know where it's going. You have to you have to keep track of all the spray, all the debris in every song. And it's got to go in this circle here. You know, and that circle is going to be your hitting point. So if you punch, that would be you know the hitting point of the of y of your point of view of where you're at when you listen to it you know and then you can say well this is where i caught this you know this is where this was bad here's where i get to stop it before it happens you know if i had this or that you know or i get to stop this moment then that's when you say this is where i made a point out of the song and i know what it means it always hits me always registers to me and um Anyway, that is kind of crucial, but it's at the same velocity of what I was saying, so I think it's just as easily to understand what I was going to say. But since, you know, I, I had something to actually really say, you know, then I'll go ahead and say that too. And it is that um, there's some practices you can do that are pretty sacred techniques, I believe. And let's just see if I can list them. Um, one is, um, you know, there being, you know, like a clean song with no debris. Is it possible? I mean, is it possible to make a song and there's, you know, like it goes in the circle, but it doesn't, you know, and then it is so clean of a song you know, that there's no debris in it. Like, you can't listen to it and catch it, you know. Um, but that that really had nothing to do with the saying, but uh, it kind of does, you know. 
Um, another thing you can listen for, you know, is, you know, obviously a debris song. You know, a song that has a lot of debris from what you've been doing that funnels into the environment so when the listeners hear it and it goes in their ears, you know, they know that the eardrum looks like, you know, it's got a certain composition and everything that's meant it has little tiny pieces that fit, you know, it. And that debris is what you suck up, you know, when you learn about your delivery, lyrics, and your flow. Because you got to be able to suck it all up. You know, is you know, stuff I've been doing. I walk around my house, I survey every item. I know that, you know, I say, like, you know, there's plenty of times. Anyway, you know, I'm walking around the synthesizer, and I said plenty of times. And I know that plenty of times sounds like synthesizer. You know, when I have, you know, because I'm in, that sounds about the same. Synthesizer, plenty of times. You know, and when it's muffled, you know, you can tell that there's something behind there and, you know, somebody is being choked and, you know, no, I mean, you can tell something's going on. So that's what the debris is, you know, and it's something you got to listen for. And then you realize that there's, you know, distance for sure, you know, and I mean, it's always like that, you know, and I mean, there's the song here. And then there's smaller here, and there's smaller here, you know, and that that's if that's if like you know they didn't um they didn't make it they didn't intentionally say you know, oh well, you know, I was just making a song, you know, and most you know i mean it depends on your skill level, but I mean you can you know I'd say about seventy percent of uh musicians probably don't do this, you know. But I'd say that there's a good amount of people who don't pay attention to what's behind them when they make the music and where they are, you know, when they sing it. And they're just singing it just to sing it. And I'd say 70% of people do that, you know. And But, I mean, there's an ass in and there's a front in because, you know, there's this here, but there's also this here, you know, where there's a singer here.